We have these extraterrestrials, these ETs, that are on their way to this earth. And the Vatican has built one of the most high-tech observatories in the world on top of Mount Graham to observe their coming. And located right over next to them is this seven-story edifice that's called Lucifer. Now, you and I both know Lucifer, as I've told you before, is a Latin word. It shows up in Isaiah 7. Lucifer shows up one time in the whole Bible. It's a Latin word, not a Hebrew word, but it is connected with the devil. Anybody that's a Bible believer has no problem connecting Lucifer and the devil. You ask anybody, well, who is Lucifer? Oh, that's another word for the devil, but not with these people. But anyway, that's another thing altogether. So uh, they are coming down. Now here's a statement by these astronomers. And here, according to Horn, in fact, they told us that nobody in academia now any longer believes that humans are the only intelligent life on a planet in this galaxy. Nobody, none, zero. They said that all academia now accepts the fact that it's really just a matter of time having to do with us locating life on other planets and not just organisms, but intelligent life. And maybe intelligent life literally trillions of years ahead of us in terms of their evolution. It feels like they even know something or they suspect something or they're simply putting themselves in a position in case extraterrestrial life is discovered to be the go-to religious source. Beyond Lucifer, that was really the deeper reason that we went to Mount Graham. And of course, they are. Now, I want you to listen to me this morning, what I'm talking about, because it's important. How many of you understand the Green Revolution that's going on right now? Agenda 21. Now, this is when we spend a lot of time with Agenda 21, but Agenda 21 is not of the United States but it exercises authority over the United States. And Agenda 21 is connected with the Green Revolution, and it moves into the very sovereignty of the states and the sovereignty of personal ownership. Agenda 21 is an all-encompassing thing that is moving right into this country, all over the world. It's connected with the Green Revolution. The Green Revolution is connected with Gaia. What's Gaia? Gaia is the Earth. And the earth is supposed to have a spirit about itself. It has a life. It is a living entity. And therefore, we humans are destroying the earth. Therefore, we are immoral. And because we are destroying this earth, we are immoral. We need somebody to come along and straighten us up. And that's what Agenda 21 is about. You see, this is the hypothesis of it. I don't believe that, but this is what they're teaching. And Barack Obama is pushing what? What's he been pushing a lot here lately? Green energy and the global warming agenda and the, uh, and the uh, sustainability, the whole nine yards. This is why the Keystone Pipeline out there from Canada on down in the United States, he was so against it is because it's supposed to, it's possibly could pollute the earth, you know, bust the pipe, bust, so forth and so on, all this. But the bottom line is that the president of the United States right now is fully in the green movement. Remember this now. The Green Movement is part of a one-world government attempt to bring you under the umbrella of this coming extraterrestrials from above that planted man on this earth. And, he, and these things up here put man on this earth. It's called transpermia. They put man on this earth. And when they put man on this earth, they've been observing us on this earth, watching us evolve. And now they're going to come back because they're mad because of what we've done to the earth. And so they're going to come back and they've got a message for us and they're going to do something about the earth. They're coming as saviors. You say, well, no, preacher, where are they coming from? They're nothing up there, folks. It's all demonic. But what I'm trying to do is to give you how these people think, how they're thinking. And this is where we're leading to. Pope Francis is the present pope. And he is uh, in the process now of coming to America. He's going to give out an encyclical. This encyclical has to do with, uh, with the Green Agenda, Agenda 21, uh, with Gaia, the Earth. This Pope, as you might, as you should, as you know, is a Jesuit priest, and he is the first and only Jesuit priest, the only one that has ever been the Pope. If you followed him at all, you can see where he has said some things that has angered a lot of Catholics. And I'll say this right now for you this morning. There's a lot, an awful lot, of conservative Catholics out there that have no use for Pope Francis. Okay? They got no use for him. As a matter of fact, you can read their blogs, go to their websites, and you'll be amazed at the criticism coming from these Catholics about their Pope. Now, of course, you know, that's not good. You know, they're not supposed to do that. But when he speaks ex-cathedral, he speaks from the cathedral, from the seat. 
uh, with the authority of God, but they don't accept him. They've rejected Pope Francis. He is a Jesuit priest. He is a Marxist. He's a Leninist. He's a socialist. He is definitely coming against what America stands for. He's not about what we're about, but he is definitely in the forefront of this movement to do what we're talking about. How many's ever heard of astrotheology? The Catholic Church is in the forefront of the alien connection Savior. The idea that the aliens are going to come down and they're going to save us. Now keep this in mind. You say, well now preacher, I don't believe that. Well, it doesn't matter whether we believe it or not. You're going to be informed. In the book of Daniel, chapter number 11, verse number 38, it talks about this person who shows up. Daniel 11, 38. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. The he, of course, is referring back to the Antichrist. And it says he will honor the God of forces. This is a strange alien God. That's exactly what it's talking about here in Daniel chapter number 11. An alien God, a strange God that he intends to honor. Malachi Martin, how many's ever heard of him? He's a Jesuit priest, Malachi Martin. Now let me give you this warning. I'm telling you this stuff as it is presented, and it doesn't mean that I necessarily agree with everything that's said, but I want, to get you, I want you to get a broad perspective of this so we can put a lot of this stuff together later. Malachi Martin said that Satan is enthroned in the Vatican. That's what he said. Malachi Martin said that the Jesuits are trying their dead level best to take control of the Vatican, and when they take control of the Vatican, they intend to make it the leader in the one world government, to bring about a one world government and a one world religion, and the Jesuits are in the forefront. Now, if you know Ignatius Loyola started the Jesuits and they take an oath, and in that oath, they swear in that oath that if they have to lie, if they have to deceive, whatever they have to do to get the job done, they'll do it. So just keep that in mind that these Jesuits are taking over the Vatican, that there has been a big fight going on inside the Vatican, and obviously they took over, because who's your pope? He's a Jesuit. So who won the battle? One man, Malachi Martin, who tried to reveal this stuff to the world and talk about this and try to make people understand what's going on in the Vatican, wound up dying under suspicious circumstances. He told a priest right before he died He said, somebody jerked the rug out from under my feet. I fell down the stairs, went into a coma. They put me in the hospital. I came back out of that coma for just a little while, and I'm telling you that somebody murdered me. And Malachi Martin was about to write a book that was going to reveal all this stuff about what's going on inside the Vatican. Another priest in the Catholic Church was saying this. I think he appeared on Italian, Italian television and was telling the world about what's going on inside the Vatican, and they found him with his throat cut. These people apparently had come out with too much too soon, and the Vatican had made a decision, whoever's running this thing, that this was too soon to get this information out, and that when the time is right, that it will come out. So, when you find people that are dying of suspicious circumstances, that have something to say about somebody, a police detective would say to you, hold on, (laughs) there's something going on here, right? Exactly. And this is what happened. Uh, Another man, another priest died uh, because he had, uh, he was, he was uh, along with Malachi Martin. He saw the priest. He was trying to warn the people. He's trying to tell the world. He was trying to say, look, there's something going on inside the Vatican that is sinister, that is very sinister, and that these people intend to, uh, to take over the Vatican. And when they do take it over, they're going to lead the world's religions and the world into a one world government. Do you remember reading the book of Revelation where it talks about the beast turning against the whole and devouring the whole? Do you remember that? It talks about that, I think it's chapter 17. When the beast is the Antichrist, turns against the whore, which is the religious harlot that gathers the souls of all mankind together and points them to the Antichrist, he turns against her and destroys her. Well, there's an alliance, folks, that's taking place right now, religious and political. The political alliance has to do with NASA. It has to do with these space aliens. It has to do with people like this woman scientist. She's a scientist, folks. She says there is no doubt that extraterrestrials are up there and they're coming down here and we're going to see them soon and it's going to happen. Wouldn't you imagine what the world would think 
If all of a sudden Pope Francis appeared on TV with one standing next to him or something of that nature and said, they're here, here they are, let me tell you who they are, let me tell you what's happening, let me tell you what's going on, the world would be shocked to death. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? What do you think it would be? In 2009, the Vatican called for an astrobiology study. All right. In other words, a star biology study. They called Vatican scientists, astronomers from around the world, professors of theology, theoretical physicists. Stephen Hawking is a theoretical physicist, like it's CERN Switzerland. They started discussing, here was the discussion from this Vatican meeting in 2009. What would the effect on faith and religion be given the discovery of advanced extraterrestrial intelligence in the universe? What would the effect be? What if you awaken one day to the President of the United States and the Presidents of the other countries standing with a Pope and make an announcement? We are in contact with extraterrestrials. Well, they are here, whatever the scenario may be. What would the effect be on the world? It would be profound. It would be astounding. There's no way that we could tell what that effect would be. Now, he that let it will let till it be taken out of the way. People are seeing things right now that literally scare people to death. I believe, from what I've observed, and a little bit of study I've done in this, that the removing of the hand that's holding it back is not just one time, click, all of a sudden the door opens, but it's gradual. The reason I believe that is because the Lord said in Matthew 24 that men's hearts would fail them for fear seeing those things that are coming on the earth. But in other words, a gradual removing of this hindering spirit, whatever it is. A lot of folks say it's the Holy Ghost. That's, you know, that's a different study altogether. But something is holding it back. There's no doubt about that. Something God is, but how, how are you doing? It's his business. But God is holding back the force of hell right now before he turns it loose. And when he turns it loose, Revelation chapter number 9, what does it talk about now? Revelation 9. There's two doors open in the book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation chapter number 4 and 5, I saw heaven open. He's carried up into a door, into heaven, John is. Revelation 9, an angel with a, with a chain comes, key rather, comes down to the bottomless pit and opens it up. And up from the pit comes Apollyon and Abaddon. And uh, their names mean destruction. Apollos was an old Greek god of destruction. As a matter of fact, this is the thing I picked up this past week. CERN, Switzerland, is built on the site of an ancient Greek temple to Apollos. That's remarkable. And Apollos was the god of destruction. Isn't it amazing how this stuff begins to connect and that the people that live around there, of course, are seeing all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff are being seen. I've got some ideas about this thing about seeing. I believe it has more to do with your spiritual state than it does with the actual revelation of what's going on. In other words, two people could be standing in the same place, one sees something and the other not. Do you know what I mean? Because of your spiritual state, your spiritual condition. But that's another thing entirely. So it's remarkable that CERN, Switzerland, is built in the spot of an ancient temple altar to Apollos. When the Lord Jesus Christ stood at Caesarea Philippi, I've been there. There's a, there's a wall and a mountain right there. I walked up to the alcove. There's an alcove right there that's cut right into the stones. I looked right at that image of Pan. Where Pan had been right there in that, in that alcove. You're looking at something thousands of years old. The water comes up out of the mountain there at Benares. That's what it's called, Benares. It's the headwaters of the Jordan River. And the Jordan flows on down all the way to the Dead Sea. The Lord Jesus Christ stood there and said, Upon this rock I will build my church. In Matthew chapter 16, Caesarea Philippi. He said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he was probably looking right into the mouth of that mountain, because they say that is one of the gates of hell. There's more than one, but that was one of them right there, the gates of hell.